So welcome everyone to uh, this month's installment of the uh, Educational Technology Advisory Committee's Town Hall Meetings. We started these uh, under the uh, advice of ETEC last year to get out and uh, get information out to more folks at both sites uh, about things that were being discussed and planned and considered and reviewed and so on and so forth. And we had pretty good feedback last year from folks. They said, please continue it. And our colleagues on the ETEC group said, yep, let's, let's do that again. So here we are. This is our third installment this academic year. And today's topic is the district technology plan rewrite. And to some degree, we'll talk a little bit about how this interfaces with the college technology plan rewrites, but we're really today focused on the, on the district plan. So, uh, but before we jump in, just for uh, everybody's information, uh, the sessions throughout the rest of this year's town hall program, uh, next month we'll be doing um, a session on a new technology project initiation system that we'll be releasing uh, in January for everybody to be able to make it easier for people to submit technology project requests, as well as to give everybody in the district the ability to look at the entire technology project portfolio and to, so they can see what's been requested by who, is it for a single college, is it for both colleges, is it the entire district, uh, when's it, how big is it, how much is it gonna cost, how long will it take, when's this to be done, all that kind of stuff will be completely and totally visible to everybody. And the idea is to help everybody understand what the full complement of projects are across the district, but also to be able to link into things that you might see colleagues working on going, wow, we really need that in our department or our division too. I'm gonna to get in touch with them and see if we can be part of that as well. So that sharing of information is really, uh, I think will help a lot of folks uh, coordinate resources better across the district. In February, we'll give an update on our uh, progress towards establishing uh, virtualized desktops. This is a, an opportunity for us to uh, save a little bit of money on hardware and software, but more importantly, save a lot of time and be more responsive to particularly faculty requests for changes in software and, and images in computer labs and things of that sort, and as well as to provide students with access to uh, applications that they would typically only have access to if they were on campus during hours that uh, uh, the library or a particular computing facility might be open. So providing students with kind of anywhere, anytime access for uh, particularly for expensive applications uh, is, is part of that project. Uh, in March, we'll be doing uh, an update uh, and a report on the uh, online education initiative, which our district leads for the state. Uh, that's been going in incredibly well. Uh, Foothill is one of our pilot colleges and is implementing a lot of the services and programs coming out of uh, OEI. We've got uh, about 50 other schools of the 113 and some um, form of implementing OEI components, particularly the Common Course Management System uh, that we selected uh, uh, from Canvas. Uh, so we'll be giving an update on that in March. Uh, in April, we'll re redo and, and upgrade our uh, information security awareness uh, uh, session. We did that last year. Uh, we found that it had enormously positive results. We had a lot of people really change their behavior based upon things that we talked about in the security awareness. So we had more people doing things like calling up the call, uh, calling the call center and saying, you know, I just got this thing in my email and it doesn't look quite right. Uh, what should I do? Uh, and, and so we really helped a lot of people avoid making uh, catastrophic mistakes or surrendering their credentials to criminals or things like that. So we've seen the number of security incidents go down. And I think this has uh, been a direct response of people just being generally more aware of information security topics. So we'll redo that again in April. And then finally in May, both colleges are currently in, under uh, development with a new website, look and feel and information architecture. Uh, they've hired a very uh, world-class design firm to help them with that. And it seems like about May they'll have uh, that ready to preview. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a preview of the new college websites and people can give them final feed, give those design teams final feedback uh, before, they, before they settle that. 
If you've got suggestions for other topics that you'd like to have us do a town hall meeting either this year or next year, uh, please email me or uh, contact any one of the members of the ETAC uh, group. Uh, that roster is on our uh, committee website and uh, let them know what your suggestion is. We're, we're happy to uh, do other sessions if there's a need. So with that, let's dig into today's topic, which is the, the re rewrite of the district uh, technology plan. So you may or may not be f uh, familiar with this, but both colleges, each college has their own technology plan. And then there's a district level technology plan that's supposed to kind of be that overarching umbrella plan that, that really uh, connects the other two. Uh, the current district plan is getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, it was written in 2010. Uh, and if you think back in to 2010, uh, that's a lot of years and tech years. And, and tech years are more numerous than dog years. So um, it's a long time ago. Um, think of the things that we use today that are commonplace, things in our pocket, things in our home, things in our workspace, whatever, that didn't exist in 2010, and there are quite a few. And so um, uh, it's, it's, it's time for a major upgrade. Uh, the current plan was intended to be a five-year plan. So it started in 2011, and it uh, was intended to run through uh, 2016. So it, it officially expires uh, this coming June. Uh, it was, it is uh, 72 pages long, which is um, probably a little longer than practical. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, mo I mean, I've read all 72 pages, um, but really and truly, there's probably about eight pages in that report that really matter to most people. So uh, it has been useful to, uh, to me and to, uh, to my division in tracking uh, some of the bigger projects that we've done. Uh, over the last several years. Uh, and if you look at the list of things that the plan called for us to do, things like deploy a wireless network or replace the phone system or upgrade the security or what have you, uh, you know, big things, small things, you know, we've done almost all that stuff. Uh, we've, done, we've really been pretty good at fulfilling the requirements of that plan. But our district is changing, our colleges are changing. Uh, we have different kinds of needs that may be smaller in scale, that may be more compact, uh, and, and that totally makes sense based upon the way that technology is changing over the years. So we, I think we really need a, a different kind of plan going forward at, at the district level. The other thing, um, so we've gotten a lot of feedback from, from folks uh, from ETAC and from, from folks on uh, the t uh, Foothill Tech Task Force and what is now called the De Anza Technology Committee. They used to be the Tech Task Force and then they changed their name. So um, anyway, uh, one of the things we, we heard from folks loud and clear was whatever you do for the district tech plan, it needs to be, more, it needs to be shorter, it needs to be more concise, it needs to be easier to update and revise, and it needs to be more useful to the broader group of stakeholders. So yeah, you have a 72-page document. Wow, that's really impressive. Lots of good stuff there. But really and truly, most people only care about a brief snippet of that. So can we boil it down to the to the, to the real nuts and bolts of, of what would be helpful to a broader group of stakeholders? And, and we can. Yeah, Robert. How could you put the details in an appendix and write it in short text and bullets in pages? A absolutely, absolutely. You know, or, or um, I, I think there would be a whole variety of other options for us to flesh out the details at the appropriate time. It doesn't all need to be part of this big honking document. So uh, the other thing that we heard from folks all over the place was it needs to be a shorter time frame. Five years is too long. There are too many changes in technology and too many changes in the needs of faculty, staff, and students that we really need to think uh, in a shorter time frame. Maybe three years is about right. Uh, so uh, I think that's, that's right on the mark. I know as, we th as I think about what we might be doing in 36 months, after 36 months, it gets really fuzzy really fast. And I don't know, and we don't have any good idea about what the budget situation is going to look like, what the enrollment situation is going to look like, what the technology is going to look like. It, it, so planning beyond that time frame may not make a whole lot of sense and provide us with any real value. So let's condense it into about 36 months. 
The other big piece of feedback that we've gotten, and certainly uh, this is one that I uh, fully agree with, is that uh, the district tech plan needs to be much more closely aligned with the college tech plans. If you, if you look at uh, each of the college's tech plans and the district tech plan, you'd almost be hard put to believe that they came from the same district because they're just not really connected in any meaningful way. Um, so uh, I think what we'll try to do with this new district plan is make sure that whatever we put in that, first and <laughs> foremost, directly responds to the goals and objectives that are articulated in the college tech plans that will use, an op use that as an opportunity to supplement what the colleges have come up with because the colleges don't always plan for everything. So for example, um, Network infrastructure is something that we generally provide at the district level. So the colleges have not, all, have not really had to plan so much for that. Uh, and that's something that we do at the district level. Or same with the telephone system. Or same with the uh, payroll system or th you know, any number of things. So there's things that, that both colleges and central services need but may not be reflected in the college uh, goals and objectives. So we have to include that. And then of course, we have a fairly significant central services organization that has some unique needs that need to be reflected in the, in the district technology plan. So those are kind of the three high level goals for a new district tech plan to make it, make it uh, brief, uh, shorter in time, and more closely uh, interwoven with the college tech plan. So it, it, yeah, Robert. So an additional comment, must align closely with college plans, doesn't include the educational master plan. Um, but yeah. let me back up. Sure. It could include it could. a section with educational master plan. Every meeting has to have a good um, method of equity, yep. as well as accessibility, yep. Yep. and how a technology plan over the next three to five years is going to enhance uh, better performance for underserved populations with technology. Yep and trying to find faster, easier ways that technology can make itself accessible. Yeah, thank you for that setup. <laughs> because um, the next slide is going to address that, those things directly. So, so uh, in working with, with Judy Baker and, and Marissa Spadafor at De Anza over the summer, uh, we talked about, well, could we come up with a structure for our plans that would be roughly the same between the two colleges and, and the district so that we could have a kind of a mirrored structure across the three plans so that they could be more easily aligned with each other. And they said, well, yeah, we could probably, we could probably do that. So we brainstormed on what that uh, plan might look like. And we came up with this uh, brief outline, five sections. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about strategic capabilities next uh, in the next slide, but, but our first chapter of, of the plans is what do we want to do? What do we want to be able to do? What do we want our students to be able to do? Um, what are our three-year goals and objectives uh, to uh, respond to those capabilities? How are we gonna make that happen in real terms? And that we would revise that annually, so every time we take on a year, we tack on another third year. So we co are constantly revising the plan and it's, and it's constantly being updated as a three-year plan. Specifically to your point, Robert, how does, it, how does it support other college district plans? So technology is not a means unto itself. It doesn't exist for the sake of existing. It exists to enable the other things that we wanna do. So how does, how does technology support the equity plan? How does it support our enrollment plan, our staffing plans, our educational master plan, so on and so forth. So we wanna directly address that and make sure that the tech plan is explicitly connected to those other goals and objectives. Uh, and one yeah. So um, going into or coming back from Paris, top 21, we should, I'd like to see mention of how a technology plan can actually demonstrate or estimate reduction in carbon emissions through either avoided trips to, for driving in particular, avoided travel, um, something like that. Okay. I think sooner or later the district will be asked for a formal climate plan sure. by some agency. Most likely, yeah. And so intersecting this, we'd be ready. Perfect. Good idea. Good idea. Um, the other thing that we would do in our technology plans is 
we would create a an, an annual implementation plan. So what is it specifically that we are going to do next fiscal year or next academic year to achieve, achieve the goals and objectives uh, for that year in support of the strategic capabilities? How, you know, what are we gonna fund? What are we gonna staff? What's the priority? How's all that gonna work for the next upcoming year? So that'll be an important part of it. And then of course, we wanna be able to go back and say, how did we do? How did we do? Last year we had a, an implementation plan. We said we were gonna do this, this, this. We said it would cost this much. We said it'd be done by this day. How well did we do? Did we hit the mark? Did we achieve all those goals and objectives? Or did we miss the boat entirely? And if so, why? What do we need to do differently for future years? So really make that assessment of our plan and our ability to achieve that plan at part of the product as well. So we have a pretty, and, and Judy can throw something at me if I, if I misstate this, but I think we have a general consensus from both the Tech Task Force and the Technology Committee, as well as ETAC, that this would be our, our basic outline for our plan. So, uh, you know, we haven't had anybody say, well, that totally leaves out X or Y or Z. You know, I think most people have said, yeah, let's start with this and see, see where that gets us. So we have a, a general consensus that this will be the, the, the structure of both college tech plans as well as the, the district tech plan. So, yeah. So professional learning will be part of the annual implementation plan? It could be, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So if, if, it's, a goal, if, it, if it's a goal or an objective in support of a strategic capability, then, and we were ready to fund it and do it, then yeah, that would be part of an annual implementation plan, so sure. So, but I did, I did wanna talk a little bit more specifically about uh, this concept of strategic capabilities, because this is a big shift for our tech planning efforts. And so, uh, and there's some history to this, and some of you participated in that, and, and, and some of you may heard about what, what we did last spring and, and how we kind of got to this point, but, but I wanted to just catch everybody up. Um, for a, you know, I wrote my first technology plan uh, at Pasadena City College in 1994, and that was a lot of tech years ago. And what I've seen across the country for a long time is that technology plans usually, un unfortunately, look more like one of these two things, or both. Uh, a shopping list, what, what are we, we going to buy? You know, who's going to get what money to buy what? And what hardware software are we going to implement? So what are we going to install? Where are we going to install it? Uh, we don't often talk enough about training and professional development. We don't talk about marketing and outreach. We don't talk about uh, delivering value to students, faculty, and staff. Uh, you know, it's really a shopping list or to-do list. And, and my advice to uh, the community of, of stakeholders here is that we kind of move away from that. And is, as, as a leading edge district and as leading edge colleges nationally, uh, we should probably do a better job than a to-do list or a shopping list. So we, last spring, I think it was in April, we held what we called the Strategic Capabilities Workshop and we hired um, a consultant from the Gartner Group, which is an uh, uh, internationally renowned IT consulting organization. And um, they have an analyst who is exceptionally well-versed in technology planning, particularly for higher education. And he came and spent a day with us and walked us through this uh, workshop about orienting technology planning around strategic capabilities. So asking these questions, what, what do we, faculty, staff, administrators, what do we want to be able to do? What do we want to do uh, when we come uh, to our workspace? What do we want to do when we go to our classroom or our laboratory or our library or what have you? Uh, what do we want, how do we want to collaborate with each other, communicate with each other? You know, how do we want to work uh, on, how do we want to fulfill our role when we're not on campus, when we may be somewhere else or traveling or who knows what? What, what are those things that we want to be able to do that technology needs to be able to support and enable? And then perhaps more importantly is, what do we want students to be able to do? What do we want them to do before they become our student, when they become our student, after they graduate? 
uh, when they're taking courses face to face with us, when they're taking courses at a, remotely, what are all the kinds of things administratively and academically that we want students to be able to do, or we want their families to be able to do, or their transfer institutions, or you name it. What are the things that are in the best interest of our students that need to be enabled and supported by technology? And then, if, and then kind of going back to Robert's point earlier is, what are the goals and objectives of other initiatives on the, on the college campus or in the district that require technology support? So how does our equity plan need to be supported by technology? How does our accessibility plan need to be supported by technology? All those kinds of things. So we, I don't know, we had about, what, 40, 50 people at that workshop. So we invited all of the planning leaders from both campuses and from central services and we came together and we had some really good dialogue about how we would structure strategic capability statements and what they might look like and how we might use them and how they might fit into a planning scenario and things of that sort. So we came to a, a basic consensus I think in that workshop that yeah, this is maybe a more productive way for us to go and let, let's, let's give it a try and see if it produces better results for technology planning than than maybe the to-do list or the, or the shopping list approach has in the past. So that's kind of where we're going with strategic capability. So we want to be able to articulate through the plan what are the things that we want to do or be able to do or have others be able to do that needs technology support. So that's kind of uh, how we, we're going to try to frame it. Uh, input gatherings, certainly this session today <laughs> is part of our input gathering uh, process. Uh, but in terms, specifically in terms of how the district plan will be informed by various stakeholders at both colleges and central services, it, from a, in terms of the college perspective, primarily I think the district technology plan will be informed by the Foothill Tech Task Force and the De Anza Technology Committee and the plans that they develop for the colleges. So that's, that's not to say that that's the only way for the colleges to provide feedback to the district technology plan, but we really are trying to follow suit from the college plans in crafting the district plan. So uh, that'll be the primary input mechanism from the colleges. Um, we will also be doing a needs assessment survey to all of the folks in central services. Uh, it'll be modeled on the really quite wonderful survey that Judy put together for uh, Foothill College that's uh, gone out and a number of people have responded to that and that's generated some very, very positive and useful feedback for the Foothill College Tech Plan. So we're gonna uh, model that same survey for central services. And although I would never speak on behalf of um, my technology committee colleagues at De Anza, I do believe they are going to use this, that same survey as a model for input gathering at De Anza. So we should have a fairly consistent set of feedback uh, from stakeholders throughout the district uh, for the tech plans. Uh, of course, we'll be uh, refining the technology plan and that discussion through ETAC, and quite a few of you here are members of ETAC. And uh, that's be one of the primary places where we talk specifically about uh, the technology plan. Uh, I imagine that we'll also have um, some various focus groups when we have a draft of the plan ready for people to react to. Uh, we'll have uh, some focus groups so people can come and take a look at that and give very specific feedback to components of the district technology plan that uh, we've developed and, and we feel are uh, consistent with uh, the, the overall goals of the district and aligned with the goals of the colleges. But my question for you all this afternoon is, what else might we do? Um, one of the things that, uh, one of the ideas that came up, we did one of these sessions this morning at De Anza, they said, well, you know, we're gonna, we, the college will send our technology plan around to the various governance groups that need to review it and, and, and give it a thumbs up or whatever. Could the district plan go to those same groups as well uh, for, for review and comment. And um, I don't see why not, <laughs> you know, uh, it certainly could uh, if that would be useful. I, I would really want to um, give those governance bodies some specific direction about what they might be looking for. So for example, they might be looking for that kind of alignment piece between the college plan and the district plan, or they might be looking for things that 
they believe are important components to make the college plan viable that might be missing from uh, the district plan. So I'd want to give them some specific, uh, some specific points to look at, but I don't see why it couldn't be distributed uh, at the same time. But um, what other stuff from a Foothill College perspective would be useful, valuable in terms of input gathering for the district plan? Well, it sounds like there's a timing issue. Like Th there is. We are. I got a timeline slide coming oh, up okay. in a minute. So yeah, it, yeah. Time. The time. It, it's not impossible, but it's tight. The other issue. Yeah. Is you talked about staffing, and I don't know about Deanza, but at Foothill, there's zero staff. Well, people. it's the same. It's the it's the same everywhere. The whole staff right. To technology. I so do, and that's, that's going to be a little bit inconsistent. Well, I think that it, it, it may, yes, that, that will be one of the, that'll be one of, I think, the alignment points that we're going to, you know, so for example, as we talk about uh, staffing for the Sunnyvale Center, uh, you know, we've had some uh, very in intense discussions about, okay, how many FTE is it going to take on site to support that center versus what services and other support can be done remotely and absor absorbed by existing ETS staff members. So we've, we've gone through some pretty intricate analysis of the day-to-day, hour-to-hour needs of that facility and saying, well, this could be done remotely, this could be done by the call center, this could be done by so-and-so and absorbed into their work, uh, their workload without killing them. But these are the things that have to be able to be done on site every day, so on and so forth. So, yeah. So it, it I th you know, it's a, it, it's a complex situation. So. Service level agreements between the district and the colleges. Service level agreements. We have been rolling those out more and more. Uh, we've been doing it mostly on a kind of a project by project basis. So we bring a new project online and we say this is the SLA for this. Uh, we are going to do a service level agreement for the Sunnyvale Center and say this is how we support Sunnyvale and this is, this is who does what and how fast we respond and so on and so forth. Yeah, we will do that. And, and we can continue to expand that. So, Kirk. How do you uh, gather the student input? Is it through the college plan? <clears throat> I think for the district plan, it's going to be predominantly through the colleges, although we do have, theoretically, <laughs> conceptually, student representation on ETAC. Yeah, uh, it's different. Know. And I guess my point is there are some basic functions that students expect. And like wireless networking? Yeah. <laughs> like a portal uh -huh. that is intuitive so that when their faculty member posts a file, they can get it. Or, you know. They're not looking for the, the granular yeah. stuff. They want stuff to work. Right, right. And so, I, so I think that I, th I, I, I think that I think the bulk of the student input is really going to be more relevant to the college plans, but that's not. But but your point is well taken about there there are other stuff that the, the colleges don't do that we do at the district level that requires student input. I think we could probably handle that if we did a specific focus group for student government or just students in general for both of the colleges and say, okay, but, but I'd, I, I think it would be important to have not just the district plan in context. I, th I think uh, we'd, we need to ha have both the college and the district plan together so students could react to it because I, you wouldn't want them saying, well, you don't have anything about this, 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 this. Well, yeah, I know it's in the college plan, don't worry. So, um, but, but certainly um, we, can, we can provide that opportunity for students, so. Okay, yeah. question about the rollout. There's a couple of slides back, you mentioned the uh, strategy uh -huh. for the college and, and the district is looking at planning out. So. Uh -huh. Could that be maybe to scale up the Sunnyvale Center is if they started with media clients to begin with that would reduce the load on services? And we be a model to to kind of scale up throughout the system? We are there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. I mean, that's really what we're. I mean, that, that's kind of a little bit off topic for today, but but yes, we're we're talking very intensely with, with uh, with the folks that are are planning doing the planning for Sunnyvale about where does virtualization fit into their overall 
uh, service scheme. Right, and then the professional learning for both students and staff to integrate into the BDI system. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. To yeah. We, we need to, we, 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 not to go too far into the VDI thing, because that'll be a separate topic, but we, you know, the challenge we're having with VDI is it's still very mysterious to a lot of folks, and we gotta really get it into people's hands so they can see how it works and kick the tires and understand what it's good for, what it's not good for, uh, and then, uh, and that's, a, that's an anxious place where we are right now, so. Um, so timeline, let's, this is the tricky part of all of this. So uh, the colleges are currently in the process of, of rewriting uh, their plans. I think uh, under Judy's leadership, uh, Foothill is a little further down the path than De Anza, but De Anza, because De Anza spent uh, part of their fall term um, reimagining their technology committee and its role and its mission and so on and so forth. They just pretty much wrapped that up at the last meeting. So I think uh, when they come back in January, they're gonna be digging into tech plan full blown. But Judy's been uh, working with the Foothill Tech Task Force since the summer, and even before that, I think maybe late spring. So uh, Foothill's a little further down that path uh, than, um, than De Anza. Um, so we're still kind of in the needs assessment input gathering phase. I'm really hoping, uh, keeping my fingers crossed, that we've got some basic drafts of the college plans available in the March-April timeframe. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we'll also begin the district input gathering phase uh, in January, so we'll get that needs assessment survey out, we'll schedule some focus groups, we'll do the other kinds of things that we need to uh, it, get input from central services folks, and we'll probably open it up to uh, you know, district-wide stakeholders uh, you know, to the extent that people are interested in doing that. Uh, I really wanna make sure that we're not getting too far down the path with a district plan before we've seen a basic idea of what's gonna come from the colleges. It doesn't have to be perfect or finished or final, but we wanna make sure that we're, again, keeping those plans in sync with each other. So we'll be working with uh, ETAC to begin uh, drafting the district plan after college plans are, are at least initially formed. Um, and then uh, we'll need to get the district plan through the governance process for approval, hopefully in uh, the very late part of the spring. We don't want it to go too late because, you know, once we get past about mid-May or so, then of course we all start focusing on other things like um, commencement and wrapping up the academic year and vanishing for the summer and all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, so, uh, and we really are hoping to have this uh, approved and through the governance process for um, July of 2016. And that would include having that annual implementation plan ready to go for the 16-17 academic uh, fiscal year. So that's, it's, it's not impossible, but it is tight. There's not a lot of, luxurious time for people to casually ponder uh, what we're talking about. But given that we're really trying to boil it down to a much more concise, uh, brief document that is really consumable, I think uh, people will be able to uh, respond in a meaningful way. The, the other thing that we're talking about, and, and certainly we've talked about this at ETAC, I think both uh, the technology committees are talking about this as well, is in the past when we've created a tech plan, we've really essentially published it as a, in a printed document form. And I think uh, at least for the district plan, we're gonna not do that anymore. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be a PDF that you can download and print out. It's really gonna be a native web document that only lives on the website and is continuously updated uh, on the website. So I think that'll save us a lot of, a lot of effort and, um, and just make it that much more uh, easy to revise and update. And, and I'm, I, I think both colleges are thinking the same thing. Uh, I, I would certainly encourage them to do so. So um, I, I there, well, there you go, exactly. So I think that is all I've got for this afternoon, but I would certainly welcome any questions or comments or other suggestions for input gathering or review or reaction or please don't forget about this or whatever you might have for this afternoon.